number one. This happened a while ago when I moved into my own place for the first time. My parents had lent me money for a place, so I decided to move into a duplex type house by myself. Anyway, after about a month of living there, I got settled in and became quite friendly with my neighbours. One morning, I went to the mailbox to get bills and stuff, and I noticed that someone had broken it open. The metal lock on the back looked like it was shimmied off or something like that. I looked inside, a mail was there, but it was all opened and put back in their ripped envelopes. At the time, I didn't think much of it, and I was just pissed off. Jumped forward a few days, and it's early in the morning. I got up and was about to go to work. I opened my door to walk to my car, and I realised I had forgotten my tablet. I walked back inside, leaving my front door wide open. I walked back to the front door to see a man in a hoodie standing outside my door. I dropped my stuff and let out a little squealing sound. I was more surprised than scared. He was outside my door at this point. All I could think to say was, Hi. He didn't say anything. I picked up my stuff and walked towards the door to speak to him when I saw he was holding a black flip knife in his hand. I screamed as loud as I could and ran into my house, not looking back. I ran to the bathroom directly down the main hall of the house and locked myself in. It was the sliding door. I crawled up on the floor and listened. I could hear him walking down my hallway. I just continued to scream as loud as I could. Here's the great thing about living in a duplex. My neighbours were a married couple in their early 60s who, at the time, were sitting down for breakfast. I didn't know at the time, but the husband was an ex-police officer. I'll switch over to what happened through the eyes of my neighbours, from what I heard and what they tell me. I'll call the ex-cop Bill. They were eating breakfast when they faintly heard me scream the first time when I saw him at the door. When I started screaming at the top of my lungs, Bill obviously thought something was wrong. He stuffed his gun under his belt, just in case. You can see the bathroom from my front door, and remember that the front door is wide open. Bill arrived at my front door to see the guy with the knife in his hand, and his face pressed up against the bathroom door. Bill draws his gun and screams, I don't know who the fuck you are, but drop the fucking knife. I hear this through the door, and I immediately feel a sense of relief, but also of adrenaline. Now, this is where I say that I can tell you that until you've heard gunshots in a confined space, you do not realise how loud they are. Apparently, the guy didn't take the hint from Bill and ran at him with the knife. Three deafening shots rang out. Stay in there for the time being. I recognised the voice immediately as Bill's. I was never more relieved in my life. Long story short, Bill got three near-perfect shots on the guy's shoulder, enough to stop him in his tracks. The police came within minutes and took the guy away in an ambulance. Apparently, he had been watching my house ever since I moved in and was a prior sex offender. So, if it was not for my neighbours, I probably wouldn't be writing this right now. Number 2 this is a story that I'm not supposed to be telling, a family circuit that I am not supposed to know about. When my grandfather was younger, he became the principal of an elementary school. He was in his late 20s to early 30s at the time, and despite being young, he was a born leader. He was a great principal and everyone loved him. I can attest to that, as I attended multiple award ceremonies for him and respect and admiration he received was crazy. There was a young boy at the school who was having behavioural issues in class. My grandfather saw that the kid didn't have a lot of parental support. So he called in his father and had a talk with him about spending more time with his son and just a general parenting session. 
It turned out that all the boy needed was his dad's attention, and after a few weeks, he was a happy, model student. Whenever my grandfather would leave school late, he would say the dad was playing basketball with his son after he had got home from work. It was one of those moments that he took pride in, being able to make a difference in people's lives. However, not everything has such an easy solution, and my grandfather found himself having to deal with an employee, Stanley, the janitor, who was showing up to work drunk. Stanley was an alcoholic with a mean streak. My grandfather tried on multiple occasions to deal with his behaviour. Finally, one day, Stanley showed up so drunk that my grandfather sent him home and called the superintendent to let him know he was going to fire him next morning after he sobered up. He then warned them to let him deal with it when Stanley was sober because he was not a stable person. As it goes, in these kind of stories, the superintendent was furious and decided that he was going to call Stanley himself and fire him despite my grandfather's warning. No one called my grandfather to tell him about it either, so he was completely in the dark and thought he could deal with it in the morning. Stanley was furious and went to the school that evening. He searched the offices, my grandfather's included, and tore things apart until he finally had what he wanted. He was in a blaze of fury and on his way out. He saw the father and son playing basketball. He walked towards them and pulled something out of his trousers. It was a gun. He then proceeded to shoot the little boy, killing him instantly. The father was so upset was hysterically crying, but somehow managed to get the gun away from Stanley and shoot him. My grandfather was called to the elementary school immediately by the police, because there were two dead bodies. The little boy and Stanley were dead. But what was even worse was the crying from the father and him saying that he couldn't save his son. It was clear that he would never forgive himself for that day. My grandfather was pulled aside by one of the police who had searched Stanley for evidence. They had found a list, a hit list, of people that he was going to kill and all of the addresses of those people that he had retrieved when he searched the offices. My grandfather was number one on that list. So, if it weren't for that father, it's likely that I would have never been able to meet my grandfather and possibly my mother and grandmother would have been killed if Stanley had been able to complete his mission. To this day, I get goosebumps whenever I hear that story. It's just so chilling. My grandfather never uttered a single word about this after his initial recount. And my mother made me swear to never tell him I knew. He carried the weight of that boy's death on him until the day he died. So, Stanley, I'm glad we never had to meet and you were stopped before you caused more harm. Number 3 so, I'm a young college girl. I'm fairly used to getting catcalled. Not to sound arrogant. So this event seemed to start out fairly normal for me, but quickly got my heart racing. I was driving back to my apartment from campus. My apartment is about half a mile down the road from campus, and in front of my complex is a Shell gas station. I decided to stop and get a drink after class, since I was super thirsty after walking around all day. When I parked, I noticed his tall, black, male and baggy clothes leaning against the cigarette thing outside the store. He watched me pull up and stared at me through my windshield while I was unbuckling my seatbelt. I grabbed my purse and got out of the car, him still staring me down. I smiled and acknowledged his presence, just trying to be friendly. Anyways. I grab and purchase my drink and leave the store and notice he's still there. When I open my car door, he starts heading towards the side of the building to my apartment complex. I didn't think anything strange of that. To me, he was just a normal guy that hangs out in front of gas stations. I pull out of the gas station and start to head towards my apartment. I notice he's walking towards my turn where my building is. I parked my car in front of my building and at this point, I've lost track of him. Now, usually the walk to my building takes 
less than a minute. But this walk seemed to take hours. I started walking across the parking lot to my building. I hear fast-paced steps coming up to my left-hand side. So I look over and see this man from the gas station, eyes wide, hands in his pockets, quickly walking up towards me. I panic and start to quickly walk up the stairs, since my apartment is on the second floor. I reach the first step and at this point he is right behind me, and again I say hi, acknowledging his presence, and try to act as calm as I can, even though my heart was literally about to beat out of my chest. So I'm racing up the stairs and he's quickly following behind me, and I'm hoping that my key fob flashes green because usually it takes a few times for it to let me in my apartment. I get inside and he is running up the stairs behind me and I slam my door shut and I hear a loud banging on my door. I lock it and run into my room and call campus police. Campus police find him the next day. The man had a fanny pack on, full of bath salts and a loaded revolver. Who knows what he could have done to me if he would have gotten a hold of me. Scariest day of my life. Number 4 This is my very first time submitting anything on Reddit, but I've been looking for weeks. Hopefully, I'm posting this in the right place and my formatting is correct. I went to a private Catholic school from K3 and while I have fond memories of playing with my friends in a massive yard and climbing trees, I also have a memory of something that bothers me to this day. When I was in third grade, I started getting anonymous notes in my desk. I remember the first one was written on construction paper. It was wedged between my books. Looking back, it seems more like an adult attempting to mimic a child's handwriting. It said that I was pretty and they wanted to get to know me better. I asked my friends if they saw anyone at my desk before class started. They all said no. They all had breakfast at school and I all sat at home, so they were in the classroom much earlier than myself. So I would... I asked my friends if they saw anyone at my desk before class started. They all said no. They all had breakfast at school and I all sat at home, so they were in the classroom much earlier than myself. So they would have noticed Four of us sat together in the square. Over the next few weeks, I received a note about once a week. My best friend teased me saying I had a secret admirer. But the whole thing made me feel... wrong. Sometimes these notes were accompanied by oranges, my favourite fruit, or chocolate. Usually I would find the note, always in my desk, and I would crumple it up when no one was looking and throw it away in the trash can hall. I asked my friends many times if they were pranking me. They always denied it. As the months went by, the notes became more sexual and suggestive. They were always written on construction paper, but about a month in, the notes also had pictures of women in lingerie cut out and pasted to them. The notes were always short and would say things like, You're so sexy. I want to see you in your underwear. I bet you look better and then progressed to my admirer professing his love and talking by touching me. I was obviously totally freaked out, but I had no idea what to do. I never responded, I just threw them away. My best friend stopped thinking it was funny and seemed just as scared as me. Around this time, I started getting them every day. It was so unnerving. One day, I found one while reaching for my spelling book in the back of my desk and it fell to the floor, right in front of my teacher. She bent to pick it up and whatever she read made her eyes go wide. She looked at the note, at me, at the note again, took a deep breath and told me to see her at recess. At recess, she asked me a lot of questions, like when did I start getting them and if I knew who they were from. I told her everything I knew which wasn't much. She assured me I wasn't in trouble. She went through my desk and found three more notes. 
I guess I'd missed a few and every time she read one her eyes got wide and her face got red. She ended up calling my parents in for a meeting. I still don't know what they talked about but the notes finally stopped or my teacher was intercepting them. I don't really know. So creepy ass dude he sent graphic vulgar notes to a seven or eight year old let's not meet and though I'd love to punch you in the face. Number 5 This is based on a true story that terrifies me to this day. This happened a few years ago and I'm an Asian male. It was then around my early to mid 30s. I run a small business with my business partner and sometimes requires us to travel to other states. We usually go to motels to stay during the night. During the night, my business partner and I drank some alcohol. Anyways, I woke up at like midnight, dehydrated from the drinks I had a couple of hours before. I was very tired and didn't think twice by stepping outside of my room at such a late time. The motel spending machine happened to be in a distinct dark corner of the rooms. There were two vending machines and at the other one this man kept buying bagged chips and cookies. I didn't really take note of this and was simply annoyed that the vending machine ate up my dollar without giving me my bottle. I only had a $20 bill, so went and got change. When I came back, the man started interrogating me intensely. Apparently, he left his wallet on the top of the vending machines, but it was suddenly gone, and I was the theft of his wallet. Where's my fucking wallet? He yells. I don't know. I don't have your wallet. Then I was conscious of my surroundings and took notice. He had a stack of vending machine goods. I assumed that he was on drugs. He kept asking me for his wallet and I would reply that I didn't know. Finally, he raced to his pockets. Normally, that is where people usually have their wallets. But suddenly, he pulls up his gun and points it at my chest. Inside, I'm shaking. I have two baby girls at home. I thought at that moment I'll never see them again. If he pulls the trigger, then I'm dead. However, these other two men were loitering around our location. Before, I've seen them walking back and forth around the motel. This man saw these guys and asked me, Are they your friends? Knowing that answering yes or no may 70% harm me either way. I just stood there without a reply. He said, Wait here. As he turned his back from me, as he walked off 20 foot, I dashed off. The distance would usually be lengthy back to my room, but I got back to my room in immediate seconds due to my adrenaline. My energy was so strong that when I got back, I woke up my sleeping business partner. I just wanted a bottle of water to satisfy my thirst. Instead, I almost lost my life. It's such luck that I managed to pull myself away from a dangerous situation. Be careful, guys. Hey guys, if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. You can also leave a comment below. All feedback, good or otherwise, is always appreciated. If you have any creepy stories of your own, or of any topics that you would like me to cover, feel free to send them in via any of my social media. You can find all links to my social media in the description below. Until next time guys, make sure you lock your doors, stay safe, and I'll see you next video.